some stories about Christianity because I'm a devout Christian. Um, I read my Bible every day. I attend services more than two times a week. And uh, Shanti and I have had many conversations how Christianity parallels everything in his books, everything from the Bible. Um, I just enjoy it so much. Priests and pastors will come and go in a 30-year period. Um, the constant I've had is with Shanti. And um, not to take away from my faith at all, because uh, I've had conversations with individuals that have come to yoga classes with Shanti who are devout Christians, and they just couldn't stay here because they, they couldn't bring themselves to uh, say the mantras. And I, I would explain to them that if you listen to Shanti, Shanti will say to you, the mantras can mean whatever, whatever you need them to mean to you, how you can relate to your own faith. And, uh, and some people can't get past that. Yes. But um, for me, it's just been a, a, a wonderful interaction. And uh, so I, I can't thank Shanti enough for his, uh, his guidance and, uh, and his open-mindedness mind as far as Christianity is concerned. Um, because, I, as I said, I read my Bible every day, and I relate so well to what's in the Bible because of my interaction with Shanti and my reading Shanti's books. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what other thing helped me is quantum physics. You know, they don't believe. Yeah. They show vibration. World is vibration. You know, the Om is the vibration. They found more research. Om is the vibration of sun, and some author it says, Vibration of entire galaxy is all. So really, there are different sound vibration are vibration of the universe. So then, what is you know? How can you catch it into different compartment? In the same way, how can you capture yoga into different brand names? You know, Iyengar Yoga, Bikram Yoga. Put your name and structure, order of yoga position. How can you capture it? Yoga. It's just like air, you know, you can bottle it and give different name, but actually <laughs> air is air. <laughs> yeah. Yoga is yoga. So the whole thing, yoga is life, yoga is being, you know, and yoga is undoing. So people who get so much stressed out doing, doing, is undoing. Mm -hmm. So this is what I do. When yoga teachers were trained and this and that, I break their ego. You know? <laughs> then, then, then they experience instead of they feel and experience, and then you not necessarily all the certificates have no value once you get that. Sharon? Um, the conversation on the Christianity is very interesting to me. Um, I was raised Baptist, and uh, we stopped going to church before in the Baptist faith. You're not baptized until you're like 14, 15 years old. And my family stopped going to church before that happened, so I was never baptized. And I never took communion um, because you didn't take communion until you were baptized. And there was, you know, a preparation that went with it. And so I never took communion in my life because I felt as though I, I did, never did this preparation and it shouldn't be taken lightly. And um, I found myself just a few years ago in church one time. And the way that communion was presented was in such a way that there was no not taking it without being conspicuous, rude, and belligerent. So I, I took the communion. I thought my sister might not take it, and then I'm like, okay, well, we both don't take it, but she took it. So I took it, and then I kind of had a panic attack over... I, I've never done this. I, I always said I wouldn't do this unless I prepared myself or was baptized, and I haven't been. And and I sort of power prayed my way through it. And how I and I never liked communion either. The whole blood and body it was just icky to me. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> and I kind of power prayed my way through it. And the way that I got through it was I thought, oh, the the grape is it's the energy, it's the prana, and the bread is from the and the earth and, and and this is this is prana and and this is this is God's energy and okay I can do this so uh, so now I can take communion but it, it just that when you were talking about the, the uh, Christian
Christianity and the prana and all of that, it, it just reminded me of that because I had to use prana to work in my the faith that I was raised in. I just couldn't, even I think even if I'd ever been baptized, the whole idea of communion would have been distasteful to me if I hadn't worked through that. <laughs> <laughs> All the religion and cultures have something with baptizing water. And that's why I told some many of the students to check Kumbha Mela. Kumbha Mela, Holy Ganges. People bathe in the Holy Ganges. And you haven't seen so, so many people. They said 50 million people visit during that time. You know, you can see masses of people. No violence, you know, no meat, no alcohol. It's just people are blissful and there are naked sazus by thousands. <laughs> just you can see people are blissful, you know, it's just a new experience. But bathing in Ganges is considered very holy. So all religions have some connection with bathing because it's external purity which is necessary before internal purities. So if you look at symbolism, you can see in all religions, symbolism are means. But when you don't understand it, then you protest it. So Catholicism, the ritual, Protestants opposed it. In Hindu culture, the same thing happened in you know, old culture. And then there came Brahmo Samaj and revolutionary. They say all this humbo jumbo worship of statue and idol worship is not good. They become more reformative. But after a while, they lose the power. And then again, this thing came in. So because we are human, we need symbolism. If we want to, say, respect our country, we need a flag. You know, flag is symbolism. Mm -hmm. Cross is symbolism. Om is symbolism. Mm -hmm. well, Shiva statue is symbolism. How can you explain all this abstract? How can you explain? So with the Shiva statue, everything is explained. And I have explained the whole thing in this book. You know, the whole creation is explained. Big Bang is explained. Dance of Shiva is explained. When you understand why four arms, you know, all these are symbolic. Because how can you describe strength of someone? You can build big muscles, you know. But after a while, there is a limit. So you have to build extra arms. <laughs> you have to build extra brain. So these are all symbolic. So everything lands in. But when you rise above, you go beyond symbolism. Symbolism is only a means. You know, then you have to go beyond <coughs> symbolism. You cannot hang on to symbols. You go beyond. It's only serves the means. Yes. Thanks, Shanti. I just wanted to share something. Um, Having been a nun for 12 years, I knew a lot of theology and beliefs and everything. Yes. And my brother was a priest, and he's, when I left the convent, I said, I'm leaving the church, too. And he said, well, you could probably stay in the church if you just don't write a book about what you believe. Yes. And I, Because I didn't believe a lot of the things. But then when I came to you, yes. suddenly everything was possible. So I had a new respect for my religion. Yes. And the things that I did not believe became a possibility of belief. Yes. And it was only because you helped me to expand my consciousness yes. to let other things in. And now everything is possible. Yes. But I don't expect yes. 